Well, Natalia, I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to talk to you today. Big break Atlantis. I'm so excited about the show, and I'm so excited that you're actually connected to a fellow champion on the big break, David Burney. So I gather you and he have been good friends, and he encouraged you to audition for the show. Yes, he did. I've, um, I've known him for a while. <laughs> we played tournaments and we practiced together for um, many years when I started off um, playing CJGA tournaments and AJGA tournaments and even other local stuff too as well. Um, so we've always practiced a lot together and he, he's always had that mindset and very focused when it comes to things that he wants. So that kind of rubbed off on me, so that's why I love practicing with him. He can go all day. Okay. So, I mean, <laughs> for me, it's, it's my body hates it, but my mind, I can do it. So, I mean, yeah. it's the love-hate relationship there. But he's, uh, he's a good focal point, and he's really good. Um, a good person to just even look at and see where his drive is, and you can see what he's done. And obviously, his accomplishments show it itself. So, if you don't know him, um, what he's accomplished will show it as well. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, let's hope we have uh, two Canadian big, big big break champions in a year. That would be that would be terrific. So well, keep we my fingers. See. Yeah, we <laughs> gotta watch and see. Yeah. So I know there was a point in your life where you thought you might have to give up golf for um, a problem in your wrist. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. Um, this would have been in 2009. Um, I had surgery in September. So. The summer before that, I was having some pain in my wrist, in my left wrist, and um, I got it looked at a couple of times, and it was just, they were saying it was a cyst, so a lot of athletes get cysts, and it's just fluid buildup, so it pops on its own kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, so it was just under watch for a little bit, so I kept playing tournaments, and I kept um, doing my thing, and hitting balls, and playing all the time, and it was still bothering me, so I didn't understand what was going on so more further tests were going on with CAT scans and, and ultrasounds and all that fun stuff so mm. um, ended up being that I had bone missing in my scaphoid so in in layman's terms meaning I had like a hole in mm. one of my bones in my wrist and it's the main function to actually rotate bend and to do anything like turning and twisting mm -hmm. so that was actually giving me the ache all the way up to my elbow and my scores um, even showed the pain that I was in. Like, I could not control the golf ball whatsoever because your left wrist is the power of your swing. Your right mm -hmm. hand just goes there and goes along for the ride. So if you don't have any control, it just goes wherever. So it was just me trying to fight for my golf ball to be where I want it to be in tournament. So it was very frustrating. So um, long story short, I ended up having um, surgery done in London in uh, September 2009. And... A bone graft was done, so I took bone from another part of my hand and put it there, and everything was okay. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I was out for a year. I mean, I learned a lot of patience. Hmm. I learned a lot, a lot of patience of actually realizing that I need to go through physio. I need to take my time. I need to let my body heal. I've had injuries before. I've broken bones before, but this is something hmm. that's very important to my game and very important to my career, so it's not something I can just take lightly. And people around me, they know that even my physiotherapist, she's the first one to know that I am very high tolerance pain for pain. So, mm. I mean, having that high pain tolerance is just like I can't tell when my body says no and my wrist says yes and vice mm. versa. So, I mean, my mind has to be focused on my hand. And even if my mind says go and continue like every athlete, my body says no. And I couldn't, and it was beneficial to me to not push myself because I could have um, had myself in a really big hole and really injured myself further than I already had. So, yeah. I mean, it was just, it was very painful and very draining um, mm. just to wait for a year and get an okay and asking people if I can do this and that, this and that. Couldn't mm. even drive at one point. So, I mean, it was really stressful, but I didn't give up. I don't give up on much. Um, if my mind is set for something, I will do yeah. it no matter what, oh. especially something that I love to do. I'm not going to quit. So yeah. I just learned patience <laughs> over the years. So, Well, that should do you well in golf because patience is, you know, it's one of the clubs in your bag. You, you better play it well. <laughs> exactly. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Well, you know, let's talk about the show a little bit, Monday night. Um, your first challenge, you, you took position number two and you missed. Okay, so that could have set somebody back a long way, got their confidence down and everything, but you regrouped and did amazingly well. So what is it you did between that particular challenge and then the glass breaking challenge where you did so well? What turned you around and made you perform so well? I mean, knowing that um, you have to putt um, barefoot and not, you know, having prepared for the putt or anything like that, it's like, it was tough. It was one of the tough putts on the green. And the thing was, um, we even talked about, the girls talked about it after we all putt, was that we all thought it broke towards the water, but it actually broke away. So this mm. is why all of us were missing on the high side of the ball. So mm. we all discuss it when we're on Safe City when we actually hit the putt. So we're like, you know, it was just something, obviously, if you made the putt, awesome. You are already ahead of the game. You're you're doing well already. You're, you know, you got a kickstart. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the girls that didn't, yeah, we're all like, uh-oh, what do we do mm -hmm. now? Like, maybe all of us are going to be, um, you know, having issues later on with our, our points and missing out on things, just like you said. I mean, me, I was just letting it be. So I was like, tomorrow's a new day, um, see what the challenge brings us, and just try to redeem myself. And a lot of the girls were just iffy on it and upset and things, and I was like, I can't be that way, and I'm not that way. If I mm. hit a bad shot, regardless if it's in a tournament or on the show, because it's one shot, one shot only, I'm not going to, you know, keep myself depressed about it, because that's not going to help my game regardless. So mm -hmm. I was just excited for the next day and for the next challenge, just to redeem myself, like you said. So, and that's what I try to do. So um, the glass break was next, and it's usually all further on in the in the episode, but mm -hmm. they actually did it first off. Yeah, um, because that's always everybody's looking for the break glass, right? In the big break, so yeah. um, it's kind of a real shock that they did it right away. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, with the place that they put us right next to the water, the wind was even stronger that morning too, as well. And it was a lot closer than you actually looks on TV. It may be about twenty paces, twenty to thirty paces. Mm -hmm. And I mean, to keep a ball that low, that quick and not mm -hmm. move it an inch because an inch, just like Aubrey, she hit the top of the frame. And a lot of the girls hit the top of the frame. And, I mean, mm -hmm. an inch lower, they would have hit the, gra the glass easy. So, I mean, it was tough. But, I mean, I tried to keep focus. I understood what I needed to do. And I had a couple clubs that I chose as well, and some didn't do as well. So I just picked my one club in my head, and I went for it, and it ended up being the right one. So, so did you break it on first try? Yes. Wow. See, hardly anybody does that. Yeah, hardly some anybody. of the girls did. Um, I think a few did. Some took a couple shots, some not at all. Um, but, I mean, it was tough. The the wind really played a factor the whole show. Yeah, it looked so, very windy. Yeah. Yeah, even my mom said that when she uh, when she was watching it. And he's like, look at your hair, it's everywhere. Look at all the girls' hairs are everywhere. I said, yes, Mom. It was like 30-mile-an-hour wind, so it was pretty crazy, but it was very challenging. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, but you got to sit back and watch. Thank goodness you didn't have to play anymore in that wind. Um, so watching the other girls, you have, you know, you probably played some practice rounds with them, maybe you knew some of the ladies before. Um, who did you think at the end of the day would be the biggest competitor for you in the rest of this series? I mean, I didn't really judge each girl and put myself in that position. I kind of just went day by day. Mm -hmm. I didn't really think, oh, this girl I have to watch out for. Oh, this one, this one, she's, you know, she's she talks a lot and this and this. No, I didn't say mm -hmm. anything like that. I didn't didn't have that mentality whatsoever. But um, I just kind of went day by day. Mm -hmm. we, the girls, with the girls talked, like we all got along really well. Um, but I kind of focused on my mind on just what the next day you know, help. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the hardest thing was that I, I'm a person that likes to know what's going on and that needs to know what's going on to day-to-day -day basis. And going to a show and not knowing a clue of what you're doing <laughs> was such an eye-opener. Yeah. So, I mean, you're on the range hitting balls like normal, like you normally would in a tournament, but you have somebody telling you, okay, this is a hint for this mm -hmm. challenge. Mm -hmm. And then you go and you still don't even know the challenge. You're still hitting balls, but you have no idea. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the challenge itself, and it's just like, 
well, that was nothing that I guessed, or that was right on what I guessed, or, you know, even the girls, we have conversations on the range, too. Maybe this, maybe that, maybe this, maybe that, but it was was definitely a different way of looking at things and where my mind is with golf and how to actually approach things differently now. A huge eye-opener, so. Hmm. Oh, you learned a lot then in this experience. I did. Yeah. I did, I did. So mm-hmm. even looking, going to a tournament, which I'm going to start doing uh, in June, I have my first tournament, so I mean, you can't just think of one shot. You know you have 72 holes to play. Mm-hmm. By all means, you have more time to recuperate and to get yourself back in the game, regardless if you have a double, you can come back with some birdies to get back at even, things like that, but the show is totally backwards. Like, you have mm-hmm. one shot and one shot only. Yeah, you have um, a second for an immunity to get yourself not eliminated, but still, you know what I mean? It's like you want to get it over with and do your best that first time and do it well. Mm -hmm. But also, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't have 72 holes to redeem yourself. You only have that one shot. No, that's for sure. It was Aubrey who said, you know, that 75 yards feels like 250 when you're on the big break, and it doesn't feel like that when you're walking on a tournament, you know? Oh, yeah, I agree with her. Mhm. Mhm. That uh, yeah, that was uh, that was very eye opening. I liked that. You know, uh we didn't get to see a lot of you perform uh this time around and I'm not hoping that you get any closer to elimination, but uh looking forward to watching the next show, especially with Yanni Sang showing up, being a ringer yeah. on one of the teams, so that's yep. gonna be exciting. Um so is there anything you want to close with today, your first time on the interviews and I hope we do a lot more. Anything you want to close to speak to the audience today? Um well, I hope everybody does enjoy the show that does uh, watch it. And if for you who doesn't watch golf or doesn't know anything about golf, it is Love Reality TV. It's a totally different aspect of go- about golf. It's not watching people play tournaments. It's totally different. There's games involved. There's money involved. There's prizes involved. So it's not – if people think golf is boring, this is a totally different look outlook on golf. So if they – if they see me on Facebook and they see me on Twitter, definitely check out previews. Definitely check out our episodes. See how you like them. We love to hear the feedback. I know a lot of the girls love feedback just so we can know how we played and how we look and how mm-hmm. we act and how everybody sees us because each episode is different. So people, if they didn't see the show, definitely go out and look for it and find your good player, find your favorite player and watch it and make sure it's in your alarm on your phone saying, oh, Monday nights at 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I certainly will be watching it. And I look forward <laughs> to talking to you again next week. And, uh, yeah, you have a great week. And thanks so much again for uh, doing right. the interview. Thank you so much. Okay, take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.